Okay. Welcome to another episode of Electronics. We're fucking huge now. I keep saying that and the sarcasm of not actually being huge and it being like this weird little minuscule podcast when we actually really are gigantic fucking juggernauts on the radio. It's starting to be a little bit annoying, but after this one, we will surely be gigantic because McJuggernuggets is here and he is fucking huge. Who's that? That's you. Oh, shit. You're huge. You're a big deal. Thanks, guys. You're humongous. Appreciate that. My daughter no, didn't know who you were, and then I told her who you were, and then she went on YouTube, she's 11, and was like, oh, oh my god. You know him? And I'm like, no, but he's going to come on my show. And that made me cool. After all my accomplishments, just that you were going to come on and talk to me, and she doesn't even know what you've done yet. Does she, was she like, is that the nerdy kid with the games that got run over the lawnmower? She didn't even know that. What? She just saw how many followers you had on YouTube. That's sad. Is well, it is, though? Is it, okay, I'm try, I've been thinking about that. My sister when I was growing up went through her phase where she got like Tiger Beat magazine and stuff like that and there was just like pretty boy douchebags like River Phoenix was a was a guy at the yeah. time and then Kurt Cameron from Growing Pains and I feel like if I had said to my sister hey I'm gonna interview blah 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 and she didn't know who it was but she could flip to a page of Tiger Beat and see his picture there she would just be impressed yeah. he's gotta be somebody cause there he is so isn't this pretty much the same it's thing? It's a damn validation. They could have all be bots. It's just a number. Who really knows? Yeah. Someone I mean, makes somebody special? What is that? I don't know. What about if it's... Because like, to me, YouTube stars are like the new Hollywood acting stars. And if you don't really watch a show or you haven't seen a movie, but they're at the awards, right. then they're a part of it and they are celebrities. And that's the... You would be... Uh, I don't know about awestruck, but I, I see it in adults where they don't know who a certain person is, and they're like, oh, there's something, and I'm either angry at them for being famous and I don't like them because I don't know who they are, or I'm like, wow, isn't that amazing that, uh, I mean, I've had, uh, I raced this week at last weekend, and a girl at 7-Eleven said, oh my god, are you Jason Ellis? And that does not happen to me, not that often. And I was like, yeah. And the dude that was uh, selling me stuff looked at me differently. He, at one point, was like, I'm pretty sure this credit card is stolen. <laughs> and then when that girl said that, he was like, wow, I have a celebrity in the in 7-Eleven. Right, right. But he didn't know who I was, or did he give a shit? But I got treated differently for a second. He was like, he's definitely, this credit card's definitely his now. It does change the perception. Right. You know, it's like the love, the quality, the quality of the, that number. You know, what what type of people are they? Are they even people at all? Are you casting aspersions on your fans? Uh, yes. Including whether or not they actually exist as human beings. Exactly. You know, did are, how many people are following me because they actually watch the content? And how many people are just following me because of the numbers high? And that means something to you. Yes. Are cool. You, are you that kind of guy? Because I feel like individuals attract followers. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, like, it's would, that would, snowball would, you, would you go into a huge crowd just because it was a huge crowd and figure that must be something I'd be interested in? I, I, I dislike the bandwagon. Right. Yeah, yeah. Have you always disliked the bandwagon, or is it now something that is burning because the bandwagon is consuming you? I will, I, I'm not one of those that goes out of their way to, oh, I don't like it because everybody else likes it, but um, I think it's important to be skeptical about who you're following. You know, you gotta have, uh, yeah, I've gotta have some direction and some, some purpose. You gotta have some, some values and know what you're following and why you're following it, instead of just, oh, my friends watch them, so. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. Have your own brain. Or yeah. you could be trapped in God knows what. Because uh, the, uh, the way I see it, the world, social media, the, I mean, they don't want you to be good. They don't want good to come out of what you're doing. They just want you to consume shit. Yeah. And if it, and if it eats you and kills you, so be it. Just buy my shit. Well said. At some point, it does need to start with something organic, right? If you buy 10 million views but they're all bot views, it's not going to go beyond those 10 million views. Somebody needs to tell their friend, hey, look at this, it's hilarious. Yes. In, in your case, making your dad angry on video. I think we can all relate to that well, let's to get, some degree. Let's get right into that because, to me, this is uh, 
We we just recently on uh, our radio show watched a thing where I was uh, introduced to a name through my daughter, through my 11 year old daughter, who was into some stupid shit. Uh, a man or a boy, I would say, that is this YouTube sensation, and I'm like, oh, what? I don't even know who this is. Uh, uh, congratulations, Jason. You're now old. Because now you're talking, you know, I mean, now people can talk to me about people that are huge that I am not aware of. Right. And I looked at his videos and I'm not impressed at all. I'm like, you're a fucking goof. <laughs> and and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking to my daughter about this a little bit more. About don't, let him, don't let her watch me, seriously. <laughs> well, it's not she you. Could shoot, she could shoot you. Well, you're different because you've put in a plan. You've bamboozled people. You made a, you a, a designed videos that were supposed to be real. People were watching you having fights with your father, and as far as they knew, and that was, this was your plan, if I'm if I'm correct, was to bamboozle everybody into thinking you're in some serious shit with your father, and that went on for a certain amount of time where you kept that right. Like that exactly, was that is exactly right. Your dad was super stressed out with you and your brother. Oh yeah, he he was mostly fed up with me. I I was the the black sheep of the family trying to pursue gaming and YouTube and he came from the old world that was like you can't do that you can't do something fun as a job you gotta you gotta actually you know break your back and do some manual labor get out of the fucking house do something with your life so this script did was it organic was this something you were like this is starting to be something where he really is frustrated he really is coming in and saying what are you doing with your life what if I what if I get let, get him in on it and we fucking go right we go full bore on it? We yeah, sort of off as a joke. Let's have let's have a dad who's got some anger issues. That's but easy. you made that up though. That was all yeah, it was all made up. Okay, My from the start, the guy in the world. He was he never came in and said stop playing video games and and that was on YouTube. No, he, I was allowed to play twelve hours a day. Okay, it's all good. If he didn't think there was any future in making viral videos, why did he act in a viral video? Because it was part of the story. That's, and yeah, and because he, he's giving his son, I mean, I don't believe that you know, my kid. I have kids, and I'm like, that sounds like a fucking pipe dream. But I'll, I'll, I'll indulge. I mean, give your kid a go. Yeah. Yeah. So he gave you a go. Exactly. The, the ultimate irony is throughout the series is it was he was playing a dad who didn't agree with what his son was doing and and tried his damnedest to keep me away from pursuing that pipe dream. But in actuality, he was perpetuating it by being in the videos and helping tell this story. So the real story is he supported me 100%. Right. So this whole thing, where does the original idea come? Like when you're like, I'm going to do a YouTube channel, you were a gamer before this, right? I, because I, don't, I, I, I gather you're not. Yeah, I, I do play video games, but... You're not good at it though, I'm, right? I was once pro, actually. Oh, okay. It was never something that was on the YouTube channel. Um, was that a Twitch thing? A little bit of Twitch action, um, which I hear we're going to be playing at some point. Yeah, right? I didn't know you were a professional gamer. Now I'm like, bit, yeah. I don't actually yeah. know if I want to. I'm really not, like really not. We're going to see. We're oh, gonna... Yeah, <laughs> How old were you when you were a professional gamer? I was I was 18. I was, yeah, I was junior, senior in high school. That seems to be the sweet spot for like pro gaming. That's, right. I guess, like the peak of... Now, I feel like if you're if you're a pro basketball player at a certain point it just becomes obvious you're the best kid in town at basketball you're the best kid you've ever met at basketball was that your experience with video games you could just destroy your friends generally yeah I could always I was one of the best people in our school uh, at video games um, we were pro in one game in particular left for dead uh, 4v4 zombies versus humans it was fun you just shredded it oh yeah we were we had perfect sync, me and my boys. We we just we we had each other's backs. It was like you could we could destroy absolutely anybody. Did you work harder at it than people, or do you feel like you had a knack for video games? Had a knack for gaming just because we I had gamed since I was like two years old. But um, it was also we played like twelve hours a day each day and practiced as a team, just like any other sport or anything else. Twelve hours a day. That's on a school day too. So school and then immediately to the game. Yes, you that's didn't right. see a lot of sunlight. No, sir. <laughs> You're not fat. No. <laughs> Were uh, some of your teammates fat? Surprisingly, no. I think it was that young metabolism. I put down a whole bag of uh, Doritos in no time at all. Because you guys are eating shit, right? Oh yeah. It kind of goes with the gaming. Twelve hours. I mean, you know, who's making you a salad at, if you're, if you're a twelve-hour no, gamer? We, we played it in a stereotype. Yeah. Right. You don't have like bad acne or nothing. No. 
You wouldn't get laid though, would you? Uh, I would. Well, just casual handies. Nothing. Nothing. Because you got a game. Well, you, you exactly. can't have like full on sex. That would you be gotta... a thing sometimes. Yeah. You didn't have time to fuck. You could just get a handy. Yeah. Because you were still playing. I had to practice with the team, but you'd mute your mic in that moment because you didn't want your boys to hear that stuff. And girls would jerk you off because you're the well, you're a well-known gamer. The Not best at the time. To... It was just uh, must have been something else going on. It's charisma. Hmm. Yeah, big charisma. And your teammates were they getting jerked off, or were you the lucky one? Uh, one one guy also was was getting some action. But the other guys yeah. were kind of not a hand though. Right, he was getting a blowjob. Yes. Do the math there. I did the math. That's yep. That's the other oh. one. Because you can't see the screen if they're sitting in for, if they're straddling you. Exactly. I mean, you, you can, but it. you can't play that game. Yeah, no, no. It's no, like no. driving a car. You're Gets only, edgy. Yeah. You would have been team. kicked from the team if you did that. Right, if you slouch, you'll know. Like if you let one of your men die, they'd be like, "What the? F- what were you doing? Exactly. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, so serious stuff. Oh yeah. Serious arguments, like you guys, like. Uh, Definitely. Okay. Like, what the fuck were you thinking in that moment? Right. You know, I wouldn't have done that. You know. Okay, so you're gaming. You're real good at that, and you're getting paid a lot, or not that much. No. What's yeah. What's not? Left for Left for Dead. Uh, we We had only won the only the sole tournament. I never got picked up by MLG or any of the big names. Uh, we won individually eighteen dollars. Oh, oh, okay. So, so pretty, nothing. So, yeah, eighteen dollars each. Yes, in your entire career of being a professional gamer, and some library books. Some what? Some library books. Yeah, they, they wow. Give those, they give those away to everybody. Awkward. Yeah. So you're like eighteen bucks my ass. I need some real money. And are you inspired by another YouTuber, or where does it come from? started hearing about it in the media that PewDiePie and all these other the biggest names at the time were making a living off of YouTube and mm-hmm. I I called bullshit did my research saw million dollar figures and was like holy crap if you can make millions at that level even if I got like a hundred thousand subscribers maybe there's something there so then it became a full time pursuit of it once I realized you could make money off it and what was your first video that you went for I, I was when you started working, your channel the first video when I started my channel, I was doing uh, Halo 2 Machinima, which was just... If you went back and watched it, 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 it'd be super embarrassing. So it was you your first videos. Was it J- McJuggernuggets or...? Always McJuggernuggets. Where did you get that name? So I ate a 10-piece McNugget. I um, then took a giant shit afterwards. And for whatever reason, it came out as individual nuggets still. It's almost like they just passed through nothing. Yeah. Um, I was like, wow, that's crazy. So I went on to Halo, and there was this uh, game type called Juggernaut, where one guy's super powerful, and you gotta try and take him down. And I was telling my boys, I was like, yo, the fuck I took this big shit? Uh, looked like McNuggets. Yeah. It was almost like if the Juggernaut took a shit, they'd be like some McJuggernuggets. And then I, it was like an epiphany. There it was. I was like, that's me. And then uh, you're doing gaming videos where you're talking about taking shits. That's correct. And is there a following there? Um, yeah, one that hasn't been actualized. I think there's there's still potential. Um, but I'm saying, is your is your YouTube channel starting to grow there, or did because I know obviously it got bigger when you started to have your dad come into play. But was it already growing before that? My YouTube career consists of seven years in the beginning of only having 200 subscribers. It's only been the last two years once Daddy started breaking shit. Wow! When I started growing. So the first, what was the very first video? Because I've seen some of them, uh, the one where he put, uh, threw it in the pool. Yes. Is that, how far in are we there? That, I believe, was episode six. The first one was he destroyed my Xbox by throwing it into the fireplace. I pulled it out with my bare hands, and then he threw it onto the pavement. Right. That was number one. Um, and how many, how instantaneous was that? It was almost like a slow burn. Uh, it hit a million views after one year, and then... And then suddenly it became clear. I was like, okay, I got to do a follow-up to this. So one, you did one. Yes. And after a year, you were still doing your, hey, I just took Normal a shit. Normal bullshit, exactly. And but you, that one video was, was had the most hits, and it was growing. It was just consistently growing. Every time you go on, they'd be like, wow, 100,000. That's crazy. That's wild. Yeah, okay. And and it, it never clicked to the point where I was like, okay, I should probably do a follow-up. So then we did. But there, was there any money in the million hits? So with the million hits, uh, I ended up breaking a threshold. I got my first check like a few months after that video came out for $100. Like, oh, okay. 
That's pretty cool. It's more than 18. Yeah, exactly. It's like a part-time job. And I don't have to do anything because the video's already out doing its job. Yeah. And then so the million hits, it's $100 is still some bullshit. That's no money. Right, exactly. It was it was enough, but it wasn't enough to um, that go full-time at that point. Um, and, I, and it wasn't... I hated the freak-out videos. I absolutely despised them. I thought they were so fake. They were so stupid. Um, overacted. Dramatic. I, I didn't want to be that. I felt it was like a lesser form of content, ironically. Huh. And uh, once you know, it gets views. And I'm like, okay, is that what you guys fucking want? So then I just did another one. And then that did, did better than some of my other bullshit videos. Okay, well, shit, gotta give the people what they want. Yeah. Kept doing it. Um, and then we had the, the fifth episode, which was Psycho Dad Shreds Video Games. That's the one that just absolutely exploded. And what's, what's that one? How's that one go? Uh, that's where my brother goes into my room. He's, my brother's always filming. He's, he's the antagonistic brother. Like, oh, you got your game destroyed. I'm a per per perfect son. Are you scripting this? Yes. Like, so you've given them all the lines. We're going to do this. How many times do you think you filmed it before you put it up? Um, or you edited it and all that stuff? Dead Shreds video games, we did pretty much... We, we have to do it all in one take, because, you know, we only got it's one set of like video games. Real, right? um, but we have a point of no return, so once the uh, gaming, electronic, whatever it is we're using gets destroyed, we're locked in, so no fucking up. Uh, but before that, I think we did maybe two, two or three quick takes. But, okay. But generally, I'll go with the rule of, like, okay, it's all improv, this is the character you're playing. This is the point I need you to get across. I might feed you like a line, like say this line about getting a job at this point. As long as you hit those, you can say whatever the hell you want. That's what curb your enthusiasm. Exactly. Yeah, right. just like that. You, these are the bullets that must be hit. Everything else is just make it up as you go. Yep, supernatural. Now, I totally understand and respect the amount of time and effort that you're putting into this. What strikes me is that so many of the people, like take PewDiePie, like. He doesn't appear to be trying very hard. Like if I were to say, "Hey, I want to. I know there's money to be made on YouTube. I want to become a big YouTube celebrity." I would be thinking, "How can I get a production? How can I make this thing look as big and as pro as I possibly can?" But that's not what actually succeeds. How hard is it to put your faith as a business venture in something that has to be made pretty casually? That's the most daunting thing. I I always wanted to get into film and television, and uh, I was gonna make the leap out here to LA. So I'm from New Jersey, but um, YouTube started uh, blowing up. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do YouTube. And and what I learned is what you're saying is that like, the more produced the content is, seems like the less people want to watch it. You know, you can't put a sitcom on YouTube. And I think that's the struggle YouTube Red's having right now is mm -hmm. where they're not getting those viewers. It's, it's a little disingenuine. You know, I'd rather have somebody talk to the camera and have things handheld and, and be a part of that life. It's super relatable and immersive. Um, so I, I think that's the cool balance we struck doing the Psycho series is it was kind of a produced show, but under the guise of it being handheld yeah. and uh, this is my family, even though we're all acting, playing as characters. Has anybody successfully, because like they talk about YouTube as being this, you know, alternate alternative to traditional media, but it seems like everybody who gets successful enough in YouTube, the only move for them is to then try their hand in traditional media. And yet there have been a couple of movies that have been made off of YouTube series that I don't think have done very well. And you're talking about YouTube Red, which is when YouTube identified self-made talent and then tried to foster it and produce it and you're saying that's not doing well either is that just not possible i think a lot of youtubers um it found them the youtube fame found them i don't think a, a lot of them uh were were like super try hard about it i think there is a few you know definitely a few exceptions but i think a lot of the trial and error has been like thinking that these youtubers can handle a more produced environment and finding that they they definitely don't have the skill set um, required and there's been a lot of busts with movies and shows on YouTube and uh, they're kind of missing that mark it's almost like they need to stay in that less produced realm um, but you know I, I look at something like PewDiePie you know the, the king of YouTube and uh, it's very easy to get behind it's not like you know he's got a whole crew um, you know he, he's got the money and uh, but it's he still keeps it in one little set location uh, edits it all himself and I think there's something to say about like that's what the people want and it's cool to see that that, that people want that kind of heart that kind of like they want personality um, over production do you like his videos do you think they're fun to watch 
I actually I have a the utmost respect for PewDiePie. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine being the face of YouTube, being thrusted into that position, mm -hmm. and uh, he was just doing it for fun. Uh, there's, there's a lot of responsibility there. I don't even know who that is. He's the guy who watches video games and makes silly plays video games and makes silly noises while you. Can oh, I do know who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do, yeah, you yeah. do you like watching his videos? Uh, I do. Yes, I'm. I'm a big PewDiePie fan. I'm, I'm a big fan of almost all YouTubers because I, I know how hard it is the grind, um, and it often gets it gets overlooked and, and dismissed as like ah it's pretty easy, um, but it's it's definitely hellish. What's the grind? Hellish. Okay, how is it hellish? It's, yeah, it's pretty hellish. Um, just during the Sega series, you know, we did two videos a day, which were were produced skits more or less, um, uh, thirty minutes, sometimes around twenty to thirty minute long videos hours worth of content which is more than anything television is doing it's also you have to be all aspects of production generally so you know I'm writing uh, writing plot points I'm writing this stuff out um, I'm you know casting everybody getting everything scheduled I'm filming it I'm also acting starring in it I'm uh, directing everybody around I'm then editing it and then uploading it which that's a whole process in of itself that, that takes uh, still too long um, and then every single day there's no off button there's no off switch and then managing like a bunch of different social medias it's like there's never there's never any free time, and I think a lot of YouTubers struggle with that. You don't take a day off. There is no day off. That's you find yes. that if you do, people will stop paying attention? I think with the saturation, like how many YouTubers there are and, and how a lot of these younger audiences are, they have short attention spans, like they need, they constantly have that need to be fulfilled. And uh, if you're off one day, uh, they're gonna go watch somebody else, and, and that's uh, it. see ya, see ya McJerry, it's, you know. Wow. So you've done all this stuff where people are like, holy shit, his dad's freaking out. Uh, this is crazy. But then in the end, cat's out of the bag. Everybody knows that this is, you set it up, Jesse. You did this. I did. And everybody who follows you knows this. Yes. So you're still humongously successful. Now, how do you keep everybody amused when they know that that ain't real? That's the most awkward position to be in. It's like, the I'm unlike any other YouTuber where it's like the person that they subscribe to was a character. Yeah. I'm not that guy. So once they've realized this is the real me, they're like, yo, he's fucking really boring. Like, he's just a creator. He's not an actual, like, freak out kid who, who wants to shoot his dad. That's a little more entertaining. Uh, so it's been difficult to manage that expectation now. And then there's also that stigma of, like, kids and just everybody hate they hate the word fake. They hate anything associated with fake. They think the fake is a bad thing. But, I mean, I hate to break to everyone, but, like, we love the fake shit. We live and breathe and eat the fake shit all the time. Like, we prefer the escapes from reality more than the reality itself. So, I hate that these kids, they think of McJerry, and it's like, oh, that kind of thinks it's vain. It's like, well, everything you watch is fake to some degree. We're all putting on a show um, at the end of the day. So, even, uh, well, I mean, obviously, there, there's your standalone you know guy shoots himself in the leg while teaching gun safety that's not fake but that would be that's real <laughs> right, right 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 but if somebody does it more than once it's it's staged right but what are your videos now so my videos now uh have just been I, I just recently came out to LA yeah trying to hang out have some fun um and it's been a lot of vlogs which I've, I've noticed have not been performing as well as back during the Psycho series. So uh, it's unfortunate, but kind of knew it was coming. So what are we talking about here? An end to it? Yeah, it ended. Where were you at? It ended. No, I know, you're, I know your Psycho series ended, but... It's dead. Your career's not ended. Are you, are you finished? I think I might be finished, guys. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm glad we got you before Do you have a noose in here? Do you have a what? What? Need How a job here? How long are those here? wires? How long are those? What did you say? How long are the wires? They're, well, they're long enough. So you've merchandised yourself. That is correct. I'm yeah. wearing a juggy beanie right now. Everybody's getting those. Oh, yeah. Are they selling? Not really, no. Are you fucking, like, flopping now? Or what's going <laughs> on? Super washed up. And that's not true, because uh, your manager's my manager, and he's up your ass. <laughs> you're doing good. <laughs> It's uh yeah it's it's hard it's hard to uh, compare to the psycho series it's it's once I've revealed that it's fake there's no going back at that point um you you can always kind of smell something's going on so though it'd be great if I could jump into somebody else's skin 
and then do another real story because for whatever you know people are drawn to the reality so uh, if you can kind of suspend that belief for a little bit there's a lot of value in that I think um, that's why we had to maintain the illusion so strongly during the series but cats out of bang so uh, sorry guys this is me so what what's next you do vlogs they're not doing that great but obviously you still have a giant audience so not that great means what it's still, still, you still good have, right but uh not like it was so uh just kind of feeling things out trying to have some fun trying to have a little bit of fun times are you like a millionaire possibly that's pretty cool right it is pretty cool when I mean, you're young as shit man that's pretty awesome it's weird it, it, it kind of you get desensitized to numbers um you know with, with the audience and and with the view numbers and then the money as well it's like uh it doesn't really compute it's not like you get to look at like a physical thing every every day it's not like you know walter white you know looking looking at his big stack of, of money you know i think that's very different or you, you look out into the crowd and see a few million people right um right we said that with the radio show that in the beginning there's nobody listening and it's you know if, if you're a band you'd be going around and going to bigger and bigger venues every yeah. time you went to town but you don't get that experience when you're in radio and you don't get that experience with, when you're with youtube yeah that's what the, I, I absolutely love when i run into a fan on the street even just that one person that's like oh wow like somebody actually does watch me like like i just see these digits which could be bold-faced lies but when i run into somebody on the street or or you know i went to vidcon last year to see all those fans line up, it's like, wow. It, it's still uh, hard to fathom. And then, do you get paid? How do you get paid? Like, does YouTube pay you? Like, when you get that many hits, they just give you a check? How does so, it work? So, for, for YouTube money, basically, anybody can just upload a video. You literally click a button, and Google will serve ads on it. It's Google AdSense. And generally, you can look at 1,000 views equals around a dollar maybe two dollars maybe 50 cents depends on time of year time of day as well so like black friday could be like two three dollars a thousand views or on uh, you know in january january february it goes off like the ad schedule so january february they're still getting their ad budgets for the year set up and after christmas you know they just blew their their load there so january could be like 50 cents per thousand views so then it's like you know it's called the great depression uh for youtube um but yeah, then once you break a threshold of $100 earned, like you got that backlog of videos that are all technically earning like a dollar, two dollars here each day, then you get that check, uh, you get that d direct deposit, however you want it. Right, and that's just based on they're obviously putting the advertising in front. You're going to get X amount of dollars per, you know, you're not getting paid for uh, getting people to watch your video. You're getting paid for forcing people to sit through commercials to watch your video. Yes, and then there's also different ad types as well. You can have that pre-roll ad that you know plays for five seconds, and then you can click skip. There's some that force a 15 second, even 30 second on you in the beginning. Love those. Those are yeah. Those, <laughs> those are the big money right there. <laughs> um, there's the ones that you can if you have a video over 10 minutes long, you can put as many ads in the middle as you want. Right. Yeah. So they watch five minutes in, and there's a lot of money in that. So if you got 30 minute long video, <clears throat> a lot of the episodes in the Psycho series are around 30 minutes, then you slap in as many ads as possible ah. yeah. I, mean, I go through that I put up with it Definitely. I do what I gotta do oh yeah so when, how, how many views what's the most views you've got on one video most views are still Psycho Dad Trends video games I think that's around 33 million views wow and that's pretty good right because my daughter seems to think that's a pretty big deal that's pretty solid yeah, yeah. that's that's viral right there so why because you just said you could jump into another person's skin if, I'm saying if, if, if you could why can't you just direct somebody else into doing it and taking some of that money? Or are you already on that one? Interesting concept there. Uh, no, like, you, I definitely could do that. I think it comes from, I, I still have this innate desire to be in front of the camera as well. Yeah. Um, and, and I think if I started producing, staying behind it, my audience would no longer associate me with the product uh, and suddenly I'd be like you know like a famous director writer which they don't get as much cred as the as right. the actors what about uh, have you thought about doing things like put, uh, putting Kim Kardashian's house for sale signs in front of it I try my best not to go into the trends to play into those because that's what's hot right now right oh yeah and that is well, how do you find that video because you said you love YouTubers you support the YouTubers yes but we watched a video of this recently and I felt I felt like that was felt weak. Sick to your stomach. I didn't feel sick. You know what? It's funny because my friend who works out here, yes, he was getting sick to his stomach. 
I was like, look, dude, it's the kids. They're doing shit. And if everybody likes it, right. why is that so annoying to you? Because, look, I, I'm a guy, at one point, if you were into certain stuff, I was a pro skateboarder. And if you were a rollerblader, I fucking hated your ass. <laughs> And I, and I really hated your ass. It wasn't fake hate. I'll fucking kill you. I hated you. <laughs> and now I'm like, dude, it's whatever you're into. Good for you. I don't give a shit. That's, right. you, ain't, you ain't forcing me to watch your shitty video. You ain't forcing me to rollerblade. So I don't care. Yeah. But it, it if you're, you, honestly, as a guy who has created something and put a lot of effort into it, is that guy a hardworking guy in your, in your mind? Does, does he put in the work? Definitely. I, I think there's so many facets to YouTube. Anybody who's putting up like daily content or, you know, trying to anybody who can game the system, get views, you know, milk the trends, whatever. I always say whatever you got to do to get views, because that's how I got big. You know, I, I played off the freak out genre. So I, I think there's definitely always that like jealous uh, competitive side, which is healthy, which is like, oh, wow, this person got like a million views on this video. It seemed like it was a little less work or a little less creativity than something I would do on a video, um, but at the end of the day, you know, the audience sort of is the dictator um, when it comes to success uh, a lot of times, um, and the YouTuber itself, I think it's just, it's just doing what he has to do to, to grow, um, and there's definitely no shame in that. All right, you, well, you mentioned that you were, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but maybe even a little disappointed that people responded to your dad freaking out over other things that you tried that you were creatively a little bit more proud of, like, did you feel good about those videos as content so in the beginning I, I still hated them you know after the first five or six I was just like so frustrated I was like oh my god I'm becoming one of those those people that I that I disliked that are just like kind of uh, gaming the system and also I wanted to be super creative do something that's never been done before have some substance to a video there's like you know emotional arcs and characters and um, what ended up happening was after Sega Dead Shreds video games went viral and uh, I had this opportunity now to construct a series, like actually put a lot of like scripting and character arcs and drama into it. So it, I ended up turning the freak out genre, which I, I, I wasn't fond of, into something that I could get behind as an actual like dramatic show storytelling. Um, so I, I grew to love it. Uh, I, I basically took all my strengths which were like acting, uh, directing, and like long form. Cause like I hate like, I'm not a big tech guy, so I don't know all the latest like cameras and gadgets and things. And uh, I'm also not the best editor either. Either. And like uh, I don't like the process of writing, like the actual typing, physically typing. I like coming up with ideas. So this series ended up playing to all my strengths, and I was able to kind of get rid of the weaknesses or the things that I don't like. Speaking of editing, what's up with that thing where when everybody talks to the camera, it needs to be edited like five times per sentence? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question, Marco. Well done. <laughs> no, that, that is amazing. That is super popular right now. I think it just comes down to that short attention span where it's like you're going so far as to even cut out the breaks in which you're talking. So there's constantly stimuli. Like even that like, you know, people want that cut out right there. People wish that was gone because it was just like one second of boredom. And that one second could mean they just tuned out and, and is wa they're watching somebody else now. Wow. How do you feel about this stuff as as content? I, I find myself comparing YouTube a lot to like rock and roll in, mm. in the beginning where like people sold away the rights to classic rock and roll songs like a year after the songs were recorded because they thought that they were valueless. They're like, this song had a little run and that's the end of it. And these are songs that are generating a lot of income to this day the adults said it was garbage and noise and the kids said no this is legitimate shit now we have YouTube which is not taken seriously by people of a certain age as far as content but kids can't get enough of it is there a Beatles of YouTube that we're that I'm not aware of definitely I think I think the kids will always secretly dictate the direction that we take um and it's kind of just like the, the whining the bitching moaning kids they're like I want ice cream I want ice cream trust me you're gonna need to get ice cream or it's gonna be hell on earth so I think like with rock and roll it's still new and, and new things you know it, it's easier choice to dismiss it and say I don't understand it therefore I don't like it um, but ultimately digital I think will win and uh, it's just that's just where the future is heading and I, I think it's a lot of old world types that are I think traditional is threatened by it and uh, when they're threatened by it they 
quickly want to dismiss it and say that it, it, it doesn't matter. It's not hard. It's not hard work. Okay. Well, that's fine. But it, it may it may well topple. You know, you may reach that that tipping point where it, it's bigger than traditional media. But is it better? I think it's I think it's different, and I think instead of seeing a uh, an overtaking or an overhaul, I, I think more and more we've seen more of a convergence with with digital and traditional, you know, like things like Netflix. Like I consider that like a, a pinnacle of convergence, where you have traditional media on technically a digital platform, and then they're able to produce digital shows. But that's at least a higher production value than YouTube. However, uh, I see it more every day that YouTube wants to become more respected they with the advent of youtube red they're really trying to be more produced and it, it almost feels like they're starting to box out certain creators because of the edge or because you know they um promote a different value than what youtube it's almost like they're trying to regulate more like like just recently with the whole the, the pewdiepie thing um with uh, there was these anti-semitic claims right. being cast on him and then youtube pulled his youtube red show took him out of uh, Google preferred ad, so he's not making as much money on, on his advertisements. Maker uh, dropped him, and I, I think that was a huge play. You know, YouTube's biggest earner, bringing YouTube millions of dollars each year, they just dropped him um, for these claims. And Even it's, though it's not true. Even though it's not true. It's and just then, a claim. It's just a claim. And then well, it was, it's true. It's true. It's true. What he said. I mean, the videos right. can still be found. It's it's debatable what the actual underlying uh, motives or intention were. Right. I think the three of us in the room and most right thing people agree he is not a Nazi. Correct, and, and it just shows you know that direct like YouTube naturally wants to be more respected, more professional business. So that model of you know how they originated, which was post anything you want. You know, the guy shooting himself in the foot, you know, feel free to post that. Um, now it seems like in order to grow larger and uh, come at TV and film is they're going to need to uh, clean it up. Does that mean they're going to drop World Star? <laughs> Quite possibly. Oh, man. There's no point <laughs> of me being in, even on there now. So I, I'm curious, though, you're talking about the convergence between traditional and alternative media, but you've also said that as soon as things smell a little bit staged or inauthentic, people have an issue with them. How can YouTube converge with traditional media when it can't grow up in production values? That's I think that's the biggest issue. Is it seems um, like it's been for a while. Is are we yeah. answer to an answer? Yeah, I. It's tough, and I, I think if you ask YouTube, I, I think they'd say the same thing. Like we're finding YouTube red numbers aren't uh, what they what we thought they would be. Um, they're. I hope what doesn't happen is they try to be something they're not, which is they try to be TV, and they end up losing the core value of YouTube, which was post anything, have fun, the freedom of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like the freedom will go away as they become more big business, and uh, it's it's gonna be at a price. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if I'm listening, that I mean, to me, the thing I hate most about TV is that you're trying to everything, movies, TV, is trying to be more reality based. And the fact of the matter is, you got too many fucking conditions right. to be reality based. Because the real world, we talk like this, and not everybody does. But when I talk like this, I don't get a fine for it. I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, nobody tackles me to the ground for going, "Oh my god, how could you say that?" It's just an opinion, and yeah, sometimes people say fuck. Even the nicest person, believe it or not, when they stub their toe, they can use that word. It's Hell okay; yeah. it can happen. It's it, but it, to to like G-rate everything. I mean, YouTube. That's I mean, I'm not fucking twelve, but I go on there because I wanna. If I went on there to just watch like people do skits that were like sitcom value, I, I don't, there's no fucking way I'd be on there. Yeah, I just want to see the outside world at its rawest. Like, what are they doing out there? Wow, that's crazy they're doing that. Good to know they're out there. And hey, here's another... You like that? Here's another fucking 10 ideas of, of people that are doing stuff that you're into. I'm like, good, give me that. Give me that yeah. info. It's killing time. I like doing it. That's as close as I can get to relating to my 11-year-old when it comes to, like, watch... I don't, like, go down the pipe. But when I watch the guy with the, the, the sign, I'm like... Well, I'm from... I know dudes in Jackass. That's not mm. good enough. Like, you're not putting enough on the line for me. For right, me to keep right. watching it. Like, you're not... You ain't even getting chased by security. Right. Like, I can go out and make a better video right now. 
can I do two a day, Monday through Friday? Actually, if I really wanted to, I could, but that's because I've got issues. I'm a driven person, and if it was a real, if it was a business, yeah, I'll do that. I do this every day. Right, right. I'm not going to stop doing it cause, because it's a business. It's a successful business. If it was just completely fucked off and nobody cared, then maybe I wouldn't come in there every day. Yeah, it was, it's completely an innovation killer. Um, like uh, we had a few videos during the series that got demonetized because it was a little, it's a little too crazy. Like the the finale itself, when I killed my dad, apparently that was fine. But the actual finale, when I flee the country and I I almost hang myself, because there was a scene in which I almost hang myself, it got it got restricted. Hmm. So now you got to be above eighteen to to watch that video. Um, it also happened with a couple other ones. Like I think one had. Um, 50, 50 fucks in it, that one got demonetized, um, which is a shame. You know that there. Plus, trust me, there, you know there's plenty of moments in real life where somebody will say fuck fifty times mm-hmm. in one, uh, you know, one ten minute conversation. Uh, so it's a shame to see that happening. Um, we we definitely pushed the boundaries. We we had some, we had some high stakes. What I, about if somebody makes another YouTube where you can say a hundred fucks? Is that? I think that would be great. So, so that means that that's only a matter of time. Because look, to me, you know what's going on in this game way more than we do. And if you're getting muffled, because uh, look, I, it's the same as rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, if you if you start putting boundaries on me, I'm gonna do it somewhere else. Yeah. And if I and if you go, hey, come say a hundred fucks, come say a thousand fucks over here. I'm like, you know what? I will. I will come over here and say a thousand fucks. And if I'm 11 and I find out there's another place where you can say a thousand fucks versus mm-hmm. these guys are smothering uh, people from saying 50, guess where I'm going? Yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. It's like, um, I think there is a great opportunity for another platform to come out. Uh, one that gives a little more to the creators. Because, I mean, YouTube takes a, a hefty 45% of mm. earnings, yep. you know, right off the top, which I, I think you get away with a with a better model than that, like, you know, 70, 30 or something. That's but, what Apple does, for example. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be perfect. Go that route and then have a bit more freedom with it. I, I realize it might be hard to get advertisers that way. At first, um, anyway. But, yeah, I think I think once you grow, it's just, you know, they do have a, a monopoly on the, on the videos. What about Live Leak? Live leak. I'm familiar with live leak. I guess. Uh, I feel like that's the next. That, right. That's the next best thing to YouTube. And yeah. I mean, I feel like people put like uh, decapitation videos on. Yeah, there. I don't yeah, think, yeah. I don't yeah. think live leak. They goes, do. Sometimes <laughs> you say fuck. Chop up their own dick. Let's There's a video see. in there where you get your dick cut off. Well, the site came to prominence. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm that. I'm I'm going there. In 2007, the the site came to prominence following the unauthorized filming and leaking of the execution of Saddam Hussein. Oh. oh, that's on so, there. Yeah, at least oh. it was, yeah. Uh, they took it down? I mean, it probably still is. This will put them on the map. I don't know why they would do that. <laughs> right. Unless they've been trying to clean up their image. Are you aware of anybody that's trying to do something like that? Trouble with their own dick? Or? No, no, no. Just oh. a new a new way of getting stuff out there. Uh, I've heard of VidMe. Some people go in there. I, nothing, it doesn't seem like anything's really taken. Because it, it's, it's still it's to that stage where like if you, if you go against Daddy YouTube... You know, you, that's it. Like you're you're stupid at that point. They shut you down. Yeah, there's like there's no there's no good alternative yet, and it's too risky to to go to another one when when you're making all your all your money on. Right. But you have your audience, and your audience, if they're dedicated enough, will follow you wherever you go. So th- there is a comfort in that. What about uh, all the other social media bullshit? Are you a hound on Instagram and Twitter or and Snapchat? Do you care about that stuff? Does that play and help in any way so i never liked social media i still fucking hate it but i i'm on twitter i'm on facebook i'm on instagram and i'll do i'll do obligatory tweets and stuff i I like keeping in touch with the fans but i i hate i find myself looking at my phone too much and it it just does not breed creativity i'm just responding to things instead of being proactive Mm -hmm. um so it's frustrating i try to limit my usage and uh, i used to have this this saying when i when i was doing the Sega series it was like Post, post, and leave. Do not look at feedback at all. Just post and leave. And uh, there's there's a lot of uh, value in that. So you aspired to be a competitive gamer, and you had modest eighteen dollars yeah. success in that. And then you aspired to be a success on YouTube, and you've pulled that off. 
your dad cast aspersions on both of those as career goals and despite the fact that you've pulled this off he might still have been right if you had a kid who was like fuck college fuck school video games and youtube or or nothing for me what do you how do you feel about that i, I think it's an easy response i i know when i you know if, if and when jesus if i had children i'd be like if one of them wanted to be a singer or you know be an actor like hollywood actor a list i i i would definitely err on the side of caution be like well i i would i would support them as 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 my parents did as much as they can but then there's that also dose of reality of like well the odds of that happening are slim you know do you really want to spend all your life trying something and you might still not succeed even at your best, um, yeah, it seems. I mean, there was an element of luck in your success. Definitely, definitely. There, there was, there was some research. There was, there was some windows to hit, and uh, I think I needed to have all the ingredients had to be there for sure. Um, and you know, I, I could not be here right now, sitting here. So, I think it's easy for somebody who, who's made it to to say, yeah, follow your dreams. You know, go for it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I could be singing a different tune if just one of those little ingredients was off. You know. I think about that sometimes. I read so many articles about people who had these impossible dreams and then managed to pull them off against long odds, maybe over a long course of time. And you read enough of those, you start to think, right, so all I need to do is to never give up hope in my dream and to sort of move forward in at least a somewhat intelligent fashion. But there are plenty of skilled, intelligent, focused people who try things that don't work they just don't write magazine articles about those people because nobody's ever yes. fucking heard of them. Yeah, because nobody gives a shit about yeah. the, the guy, Joe Schmo, that failed. Had some crazy invention and poured his heart yeah. and soul into it for 10 years and then, whoops, just wasn't in the cards. Yeah. I mean, there's probably a, a lot more out there that are even more talented and more driven that are, are, are failures. It's, like you said, there's luck that comes into play, but the fact still remains, if you want to be a part of the lucky ones... You need to be stubborn, and you never, and you never, you can never give up. Yeah. You have to keep going. Yeah. I feel like, like uh, Hollywood talent, actors, whatever. It's like there's ten percent of them that were going to make it, no matter what. They were undeniable; any idiot could tell. And there's ten percent of them who never should have made it. And it is an absolute fluke that right place, right time, they were in some role that resonated with people, and they have no talent, but they can continue to do that thing for forever. Everybody else is somewhere in between those two extremes. A little bit of luck was involved. Definitely. Yeah, and I think a lot of what I, I would give to my audience as advice, uh, I did a few videos on this, is just like maximizing that luck. You know, you, you want to win 10 grand at blackjack, you have to first of all fucking play blackjack. First of all, know, know all the rules. You need to know the book. You need to know, you know, you need to know, and maybe even count cards a bit if you really want to maximize your odds. And just constantly play. Put your money down. And um, the longer you spend, the more time that you do it, you're just going to increase the opportunity for that luck to happen. So, like, you know, just throw shit at the wall until it sticks. And then keep throwing more shit like that. So, after this, because I know that you, you said you love acting. You feel like you got a natural talent. You can write stuff. You're in L.A. Are you trying to be a part of the old people entertainment world? Or are you just like... I, w I just want to invent another YouTube thing here. That's tempting. Um, it is. Somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to do it for sure. It's Go not... from YouTube to this jerk off world. <laughs> I still. Well, I could say you both jerk. It's a, it's a jerk off world all the way around. But I like jerking off, so I think that's perfect. Um, but you should get someone else to do it for you. But exactly. Anyway. While I'm gaming, I, I am I am here. I, I'm trying to double dip a little bit. Okay. Pull the audience into the traditional. You know, I, I have a target on my head with the audience. Like, hey, you know, you, you cast me in something like it. I can bring these these viewers over. Maybe juice it up a little bit. Cause I could see how. I mean, my radio show has a lot of listeners, and people of TV world are like, hey, well, you know, what I mean, if you brought up a TV show, maybe that would that would work. I'm like, it might. It also might not at all because it's radio, and they're in the car. And maybe it, everyone doesn't just want to fucking watch me on TV. Maybe it's not the same thing. You could say the same thing about YouTube, but I don't, I don't have 30 million hits on a fucking video that I've posted. Uh, and I think that if I did, then I could go to a network and go, look, I could do this. What if you were to do... Because it's a whole new audience. You'd have the YouTube people that would... Probably half of them would trash you for it, I would believe. Sell out. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. uh, but then there's the whole kids would there be tv kids that right. would want to watch this whole thing go again right 
Is, right. Is that what people are bringing to the to the table for you? I yeah. I I, I think one of the hard the most valuable thing is to have have the kid that kid audience. So I can see the value in in bringing a lot of digital stars, and you see it more and more. Like oh, this this YouTuber has a show now, or you know this YouTuber is starring in their own movie. <laughs> to try and pull those uh, those younger audiences over. And I think it definitely exposes the YouTuber to more traditional audiences, which can then in turn watch YouTube, which I think is a, a little bit of a harder sell to get the adults, the 40, 50 year olds who watch YouTube. I still think it's just like, it's just no, I'm just not, it's not having it. Um, to go back to early, I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to see a, a Jason Ellis TV show though. Is that a thing? Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, I, it, it just, <laughs> just as off, like Mick Juggernaut's, uh, I, dude, you're going to have way more, I like your, I like your, your uh, chances more than me. But you never know. McJugger Nuggets on TV, the Jason Ellis the dickhead on TV. <laughs> Who knows? If I'm a, if I'm an exec and I'm like, how many is you got on YouTube? I'm hanging out with McJugger Nuggets a Let's little go. more. I, I like I like my chances with you, but I I see billboards of YouTube people on, uh, 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 yeah. uh, which means the kids are gonna. Uh, my kid watches sitcoms of TV stuff, and she's jumping, she's jumping that ship. She's leaving the. It's Jesse. Da -da 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 -da, I've got a fucking fake comedy show, and now it's I like YouTube shit. What do do you know who her favorite YouTubers are? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's Jake Paul. It's all Jake Paul. That's what I. That's what I'm gathering. Like a tr she's attracted to him. Uh wow, that's uncomfortable. But I don't know about. Is it that? that? Like, is it an appeal there, or is it the actual content? She's got. I see. Like, he's got to think he's a cute guy. Yeah. I don't think it's the content because I've I, I get this. Uh, you know, we live around here, so. Every now and then, it's like, uh, oh my god, it's so and so, and I'm like, right. what's so and so? It's it's so and so. She knows Jake Paul, and I'm like, Jake Paul, because I know your manager, my manager, Evan. He knows the manager of Jake Paul, right. and I've mentioned that to my daughter, and she's like, do you have his number? And I'm like, no, I don't have his number. What if I did have his number? <gasps> Could I have it? And I'm like, oh. if I had his number, no, I wouldn't give it to you because it's not how the game works. Maybe when you get older, you'll understand that. But maybe I'll be able to meet him one day, or maybe I'll get a t-shirt, maybe I could hook you up. Oh my god! Mm. And I'm like, explain to me, just the other day, explain to me what he does. Sometimes he sells Kim Kardashian's house, and I'm like, wait, he sold Kim Kardashian's house? No, he puts a sign there, and I'm like, and then what happens? That's it! <laughs> and I'm like, wait, he just puts a sign there? Yes! And I'm like, does anybody tackle him or anything? No! <laughs> I'm like... I don't understand what's going on, and then I hear that voice. I go, "Wait, you don't understand what's going on, because you don't, you don't get it." And then I watched a video the other day of him doing it, putting a sign at the front of Trump's house, ordering a very large pizza to his friend's house. I'm like, "This is weak sauce, man. Like, we could do better. I could do better. I don't look young enough." Uh, yeah, no, I think there is a thing like that, and that's mm -hmm. the thing. I think there's mm -hmm. a. I see that the, it's a. Uh, um, Beverly Hills, very tight, sweatpants, uh, high and tight haircuts. I, I got a friend with a lot of tattoos. And I'm like, oh, I know these people. Like, like uh, I mean, to me, instinctively, I go douche. You know what I mean? Because that's <laughs> right, where right. I come from. A, I'm a skateboarder, man. I, quite frankly, I've, I'm pretty sure everyone's a douche as far as I know. But that's obviously not the case. These are the new cool kids, and yeah. they get laid and they get bottle service. That's really what it is. Yeah. It's like a extension of Justin Bieber's exactly. claim. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a boy band uh, kind of audience there, where you know they got the poster on the wall. You're kissing the poster at night. You got all the merch and and fangirls. Like I don't have many fangirls. Like I have mostly guys, young okay. guys. But the fan, the girls, they will buy everything and anything. They will want to attend the meetups. They will. They absolutely they take it to the emotional level right. the guys are like yeah yeah he's cool he's cool um and the, the bandwagon you know whoever is hot at the time like like i know jake but jake, jake's blowing up right blowing and so up. is his brother his little brother's blowing up Logan, too. yeah yeah right yeah and so, they got they got that the charisma that personality super high energy which is like key like you can't sit here like 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 right now where we're like super real talk like to them to the kids it's boring yeah because it's you know it's, it's more high level and it's yeah. just like I, I just wanted to see like a, a for sale sign in front of a house and get click baited into that because that's just and then they all dab and they high five and they Dabbing, get super yeah. excited yeah yeah which to me is bull that's <laughs> the bullshit that's the bullshit boring bit I, I, I'm i like check you guys out you guys suck you don't even like, know each other and my daughter's like this is the most exciting video I've ever seen in my life 
it's 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 over my head. I try to understand it. That's part of my day is is watching watching all these types of videos blowing up, trying to get my head around it and then see some way to implement that into, you know, some some kind of new content. Wouldn't your idea would would be to be, have the next thing that comes past this? Like you've got to be ahead because that's really the Yeah, why don't you go torture the Jake Pauls of the world? Right. Right. Yeah. Just stick a for sale sign in his front yard. Yeah, how bad is it get <laughs> If you become his enemy, does does, yeah. Is Nobody, that bad yeah, every, for you on YouTube? Wins. It's it's yeah yeah it it depends. You don't they don't want to be on the receiving end of a of a more volatile audience. Right. Yeah they they they'll put you in the ground. Okay. All right. So maybe scripted stuff. Maybe television because you're starting to sense that. Uh, I mean these pussies aren't real. You know, like these guys are. Yeah. I mean. How much does it, t like, you got your little cute boy band thing going, and right. what I'm doing here, like, took some brain, I can tell, you're a smart dude. Thank you, man. Like, you, you got a brain, it actually works really fast, it's, I can tell, it's, it's, you, you're an advanced guy. So that's, but that tells me that that's frustrating, because I feel like I'm yeah. smart when it comes to certain things, and I get easily frustrated when fucking, uh accidental bitches get all the all the love right uh, yeah. it's instinctively i'm a human being there's no denying it sometimes i get jealous it's yeah. just the way i am it's yeah, the way we all are no definitely it, it's hard it's hard to watch it's, it's I, I try not to go on youtube because i end up leaving youtube a little frustrated yeah and i try to channel that energy in, into what i'm doing um and it's like it's like when i started doing the freak out videos i like i did hate them and I would watch these. View I would see like greatest freak out ever. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you know the kid. The kid shoves a remote up his butthole because he's freaking out. Had like a hundred million views, and I'm like, my god, that took maybe five minutes to shoot. He just had to scream his lungs off and shove them. Like, what? What? That made like a hundred grand. Five minutes. Did How it go in his butthole? I don't or think it, it looked like it. It was just a tip. Right. I okay. It wasn't. Yeah. He was so angry. That he chose to stick a remote control in his anus. He didn't see this one. Yeah, he's freaking out. Like he sounds like he's possessed, like demonic. Uh, his his World of Warcraft account got, uh, I think, deleted by his brother or his mom or something. And yeah, did he shut the door and then he do did. it? Right, I saw and he, it. He yeah. grabbed his yeah. shoe. And it he doesn't get right up his ass. Mm. Yeah, but he does like really try to crank it though. Yeah, it is funny. Yeah, there's something there for sure. Yeah, because but... if I liked it, then the kids <laughs> like it. I mean, it's it's good for everybody all the way around. Yeah. But I mean, where does he go from there? I mean, what, does he put like Something, a, a yeah. car up his ass? Like, what? <laughs> his, his ass is going to pay the price Start eventually. To get sharp objects, yeah. Or is he vlogging now? You know what I mean? Like, actually, they stopped doing it. I don't know what they do. The he just took the money and ran? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, everyone can forget his face and the remote control <laughs> up his ass. I exactly. get that. All right, well, look, I've learned a lot here. I think that there's. Uh, Cause I look, I, I as I said, there was a, a younger me that'd be like, "Fuck you, <laughs> fuck everybody," but I'm like, "Look, man, if everybody's into it, there's something there." Yeah. And sure, there's some shitheads in it, but there's obviously a lot of people that have some sort of talent there. Otherwise, right. it just, it, you don't get millions of people to to, to follow you accidentally. Not all of them. Yeah. It's just impossible. Because there is some genius to thinking stupidly. Like yeah. I, I couldn't have come up with the put a for sale sign in somebody's house. Like that's next level for me. Like I, my brain does not look at that and and think that. But for somebody to say, "Hey, I think kids would respond to this," I think that's pretty f smart. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I got a clothing yeah. company. I can guarantee it ain't selling like his one. No. And to repeat it, to do one thing that strikes pay dirt is one thing, but then to say, well, based on the success of that, I can predict that kids will also like blah blah blah, because it's a, you 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 sing for your supper every day. Every video needs to deliver those numbers over right. and over again. So if you just go, oh well, then they're gonna love when I throw the cereal in the pool, and they don't love when they put the cereal in the pool. That's it's pressure. I totally yeah. respect that. Yeah. Yeah, we saw the cereal. Even though pool. I think the kids did like yeah, the cereal. Was, in the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of things, a lot of things in the pool. Uh, bathtub, porn yeah. shit in the bathtub is really popular too. He's a wacky guy, you know. Just hang on to your hats when Jake Paul's around. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all the Jake Pauls. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Love you, Jake. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show, dude. Yeah, no problem, man. Appreciate Thanks for having it. me. This is awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, check us out next week, everybody. It's another episode of Electronics.